Well, that was a great way to celebrate the 10th anniversary of the Heidelberg Laureate Forum. A beautiful cake created by HLF alumna Jay Lee and her friend and professional baker, Zhan Ling Huang. Yes, cake is my favorite way to celebrate. And the forum is off to a great start with a full day of lectures, discussions and exhibitions. And in today's vlog, we start with talking to Demian Goose, who has brought a really interesting exhibition to this year's forum. And as well as that, we visit some of the highlights of exhibitions from the HLF over the last 10 years. We're here with Demian Goose, one of the Heidelberg Laureate Forum alumni. Now at this year's forum, there's this exhibition of some artworks that have resulted from a really exciting project that you have developed. Can you tell us about the project and how it's linked to the forum? So yeah, the, the, the project is called Intercultural Science Art Project and I started in 2019 when I first attended the HLF as a science communicator. The basic idea is we invite young researchers who attend DHLF to create artworks inspired by their own research to represent their own research in an artistic fashion. What are some of your favorite elements of that process of developing the exhibition? Personally, I enjoy it to talk with the young researchers who participate, how they approach this idea. Everybody has a very personal and particular way of resolving my task and you get to know different uh, kinds of way of think thinking um, and, and, and different cultures, different languages, different ideas and it's just like a very beautiful mix of people joining an effort. We always enjoy coming across the square from the main activity at the HLF to the exhibitions that accompany it each year. This year, to celebrate the 10th anniversary, they've got some of the best exhibits from the last 10 years. Let's go take a look. I'm with Ruth Betzler, the Managing Director of the Heidelberg Laureate Forum Foundation. Ruth, you've been a part of the HLF from the start. What are some of your highlights from the first 10 years of the HLF? Well, I could mention uh, a big number of highlights, but for me personally, of course the scientific program is the major pillar and the most important pillar of the HLF, but personally for me, it's seeing the, the participants, the younger ones and the ones that are more advanced in age, network and collaborate and see how friendships develop or collaborations that go way beyond the HLF. Something we are really proud of is that in the beginning we were told there would never be a gender balance. We would never have a, uh, equally men and women participate in the forum and luckily that proved to be wrong and we're very proud that this year we're almost 50-50. There must have been some challenges at the beginning. What were some of the difficulties you faced? If I look back, um, first of all the, those 10 years they just went like the blink of an eye but when we first started we had 11 months to prepare. We started in October 2012 and the first, very first HLF took place in September 2013. And between October and September, we had to find interesting venues for the scientific program, but also for the social events. We had to find lodging for all the participants. And September is a very busy season in Heidelberg, so this was quite a challenge. But um, above all, we had to get the word out about the Heidelberg Laureate Forum because nobody ever heard about us. So this was quite challenging and we were wondering how we get people to apply, but we succeeded. Ruth, what are your hopes for the future of the HLF? I hope that the HLF will continue to be an innovative event, attracting the most talented people from all over the world in the fields of mathematics and computer science. And thankfully, I. 
I believe we have a good foundation for this to grow on. And also I hope that our alumni will continue to help us spread the word and our goals throughout the world. We've just been to the Speed Networking session and we're taking the chance to speak to some more alumni. And I think my most uh, nice memory is just interacting with the laureates, especially on dinner, like very beautiful gathering, but also like very casual conversations about science, research, academy, industry. It was very inspiring and I think it was very useful for me just before starting a graduate school. I attended the HLF in 2015 and one of my favorite memories was sharing a dinner table in the height of a castle with Sir Michael Atiyah, the mathematics legend. I attended in 2016 when Andrew Wiles was there, who proved uh, Fermat's last theorem. And I was very excited to meet him. His proof did all the rounds in uh, mathematics when I studied. And I even got to ask him a question, which was amazing. What do you think is the most next big exciting thing for us to explore or to see? Uh, so I, I am by profession a computer scientist and I develop algorithms for communication. And in this interconnected world, uh, with more and more information coming in from various sources, it is interesting to see how, as a society, we deal with this and how we move forward with all the information that we get from all the sources. I'm really pleased to be here now with Marina Wiesowska, who won a Fields Medal in 2022. Marina, one of the results that you were honored for and that you're also really famous for is connected to Kepler's conjecture. Could you tell us about Kepler's conjecture and how your work was linked to that? Kepler's conjecture, uh, it's a, a question about uh, packing spheres in dimension three. So we have a big, big box and infinite uh, and a supply of uh, uh, equal sized balls and we try to put as many uh, balls into this box as we uh, can and we also think that somehow balls are much smaller than uh, the box and so the only the density becomes important and so the question is what is the optimal configuration of balls the densest configuration of balls and um, uh, so the uh, Kepler and also uh, a bit less famous, but uh, British and American uh, scientist Thomas Herriot, they found an answer to this question, how to pack uh, balls in the best way, but they did not know, they did not have a mathematical proof, mathematical argument, which could uh, tell us that uh, the, this packing cannot be improved. And so this question became known as a Kepler's conjecture, and it turned to be uh, turned out to be a very, very complicated optimization problem. So it was uh, solved only at the end of 20th century by uh, American mathematician Thomas Hales. And it was a complicated pro proof. Uh, it uh, included a lot of computer computations to uh, make it rigorous. And so the problem I worked on, it was a similar uh, question, only not in dimension 3, but in dimensions 8 and 24. So as you just said, a Hale's proof for dimension 3 was complicated, it was very long and it required computation, whereas your proof for dimension 8 is famously short. So what's the difference? Yeah, so I think the difference is actually in dimension 8, just because dimension 8 is very different from dimension 3 and the configuration which exists optimal configuration which exists in dimension 8, it is in some sense much, much better than any configurations that exist in dimension 3. And so here it's really the, the reason for possibility of short proof, I think, the mathem is the mathematics itself. So for example, this method, it would not give optimal result in dimension 3. Looking forward and broadening out to all of mathematics, is there anything you're particularly excited about that could happen in mathematics, say, in the next 10 years? Any results that are on the verge of being proved? Any developments you're really interested in? We spoke about the mathematics, as a, especially pure mathematics, as probably a field that is developing kind of slowly. At the same time, from time to time, we do have uh, very unexpected, beautiful breakthroughs. Yes. In my own area, I hope that in five, ten years, somebody will solve sphere packing problem in dimension four.
I think that's doable and should be also somehow I think this after all a solution could be just very smart and somehow come from just pure math ideas or this is also an area where computations could be used in some smart way so maybe so this is maybe like in my corner of mathematics this is what I hope for and that, 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 at least right now, it seems to me something which should be very doable, so... We're nearly halfway through the 10th HLF, and Monday started with that beautiful cake decorated with the newly discovered aperiodic monotiles and new maths on cake makes it more delicious. <laughs> and we end Tuesday here at the Kulturbrauerei at the Bavarian evening to enjoy the local culture. But of course, there's also been lots of interesting maths and computer science in between and yet more to come. So stay tuned for the next vlog, but for now, prost! prost. Cheers. Goodbye. Saji Angambe. Esheo Modupe Odavo. Skol Ohaldebra.